Welcome everyone to another mod spotlight and today we're gonna have a look at an awesome creative tool called NBT Edit by DavyD. This mod allows opt players in creative mode to modify all kinds of entities such as mobs or spawners without exiting the game. This works for single player as well as multiplayer. To use this tool you have to walk up on a regular or tile entity, look at it and type the slash nbt edit command into the chat as a result of which you will be presented with various options to edit this particular entity. To have a better understanding of all our options, also called tags, we're going to spotlight the most important ones exemplified with a custom scenario creation such as an adventure map. So let's make a Minecraft boss with custom gear, loot and behavior, custom signs, potions and more in order to learn the basics of NBT Edit. First we are going to learn how to edit text on signs and in books. You can format your text in various ways such as obfuscated with the letter K, bold using L or underlined using the letter N. To make use of these formats, you may edit a blank or written sign with the slash nbt edit command, open up the root and edit the four lines directly. Choose a line and hit the enter key to edit it. To format your text, use the button provided on the right side of the GUI to add the format tag. After the tag, you'll have to add the letter corresponding with the format you're going for. As an example, we're going to make the first line bold, the second line on the line and the third line italics. For the last line, we want the first word to be obfuscated but not the second one. So we will have to reset the format as soon as we want the standard format again. There you go, easily formatted text on signs. Can I use colors you ask? To that I say hell yeah you can. Using numbers from 0 to 9 and letters from A to F, you will be able to color your text in the exact same way. So we can make the first line on this sign red, the second line white, the third line purple and underlined, and finally the fourth line golden and italics. Easy as that. The easiest way to understand the structure of certain entities is to create one and put it in a chest. So to edit a book we first write one ourselves and edit what we have later on. Once you sign your book, place it in a chest, look at it and type slash nbt edit again. Within the root you will find the tag called items which will show a list of all the items in your chest. Since our book is the only item in the chest, there will only be one compound in the list. Open up the section for your book and you will be able to edit the information. You can change the author, the title and the pages using the standard or customized formats, just like with the signs. To add another page, you can simply copy an existing page, paste it in the list and rename it to page 3. And there you have your customized book. Next up we're going to add our own items from scratch to an inventory. To do so, look at an empty chest and use the nbt edit command. To add your own item to the list, highlight the items tag and press the add compound icon on the top. A fully functional item in a chest requires two bytes and two shorts. Highlight your compound and add your first byte with the name set to count and the desired quantity below. Add another byte called slot with the slot number below. A normal chest contains 27 slots where the first slot starts with the number 0. Slot 13 represents the center slot of the chest. Now highlight your compound yet again and add your first short with the name set to damage and the numerical value down below. Zero stands for no damage at all. Lastly, we have to specify which item we want. So we're going to add another short with the name set to ID and the corresponding item ID down below. As an example, I'm going to use ID 388, which stands for emeralds. Save your changes and you will find your item in the chest. Since creating emeralds this way would be much slower, we're of course not yet done with our emeralds. With NBT Edit, you will be able to also rename and lower your items easily. Back in the editor, we want to highlight our emeralds once again and add another compound with its name set to tag to the list. 
Within this newly created compound, we want to add yet another compound set to display. You can name your items by adding a string within the display compound with the name set to name and your desired name down below. You may also add a descriptive text below the item name. To do so, highlight the parent of the display compound and add a list using the above icons again. Name the list lore and within it add another string tag which you can edit using the formatting options I showed before. Save your changes and adore your customized emeralds. Now that we know how to play around with the tooltip of an item, we also want to enchant it. You may enchant any item you want, it doesn't necessarily need to be a weapon or a piece of armor. So I'm going to show the basics on our Showcase Emeralds. To add an enchantment to an item, go back to the compound you created called Tag and highlight it. Time to add another list with its name set to ENCH, standing for enchantment. Within the list, you may add as many compounds as you want, each standing for a single enchantment. Add your first enchantment using an unnamed compound. Within it, you will need two shorts. The first short being the enchantment ID and the second short being the level for LVL. If I wanted to enchant my emeralds with sharpness 10, I would have to set the ID to 16, that's the ID of the enchantment, and the level to 10. Once we create our own custom mob, we will see another example of adding enchantments. With the knowledge we have now, it is time to create our first custom mob. Harry. Harry has an enchanted sword, an enchanted golden breastplate and a piece of bedrock on his head. Harry is being spawned using the spawner below him. Once he is killed, he will drop the sword, but not the chestplate. The spawner will detect Harry's absence and respawn him instantly. In order to make our customized mob spawner, we will first create our custom mob. Spawn any mob you wish to edit using a spawning egg. Look at it and use the slash nbt edit command. You will notice a lot of options given to you, some of which I will explain now. If you want your mob to not despawn, you may change the persistent required value to 1. To fiddle around with a mob's health, you may adapt the health value, the heal f value, and the first compound within the attributes tag list named generic.maxhealth. In our example we're going with a value of 50 which equals 25 hearts. We're also going to change the movement speed of our mob. You will find this option as the third compound within the attributes tag list. A movement speed of 2 equals double the normal running speed. Last attribute we're going to change in this example is going to be the attack damage, which you will find under the fifth compound in the attributes list. I will set mine to an amount of 10, which is double the normal amount of a zombie pigman. Before we equip our mob, we may also want to give it a name using the custom name tag, and we can decide whether or not this name can be seen from afar with the custom name visible option set to 1, or only within a close range with the option set to 0. Now we're ready to give the mob some equipment and drops. Open up the equipment tag list at the bottom and you will be presented with 5 compounds. From top to bottom, the compounds represent the item held in the right hand, feet, pants, chest and helmet. So let's equip Harry 2.0 with a bedrock headpiece, a diamond sword and a golden chestplate before we even think about enchanting them. To do so, we open up the first compound to add the weapon. Since we've chosen a zombie pigment, most of the work is already done for us and we only have to change the ID, which for a diamond sword is 276. Opening the fourth compound, we can change the chestplate, for which we have to add the count, damage and ID ourselves, which in my case is 315. The last compound being the headpiece, we're going to change to 7, which of course is bedrock. Now that we have our basic equipment for Harry, we want to enchant it in the same fashion we did previously, but within Harry himself. 
open up your sort compound and within it add a compound called tag in which you can add your enchantment list as well as the display compound to add your custom name to the item. Alternatively, you may also copy an enchantment and name you've created previously and paste it inside Harry in the corresponding location. To adjust the drop chances for your equipment, you may go within the drop chances tag list, open it up, it is arranged the same way as the equipment's tag list, that means the weapon right here and the headpiece right here. A value of 1 equals to 100% drop chance and a value of 0 to nothing. So right now we could set the golden chest plate to have a drop chance of 50% which would be 0.5. Once we are happy with our customized mob, it is wise to store it within one of the save slots on the right side of the screen. This will make sure in case you accidentally lose your mob, you will be able to spawn another one and once in the NBT Edit GUI, you can simply load your customized mob again. Now that we have finished our mob, let's put it into a spawner. To get a spawner, use the slash give your player name 52 and you will receive a pick spawner. Plot it down, look at it and use the slash NBT Edit command once again. Before we add Harry, we're going to change a few attributes of the spawner first. The delay option on the top represents in ticks how long it will take to spawn another one. I want this to be about 1 second, which is around 20 ticks. Also, I only want one Harry to be present at a time, so we're adjusting the max nearby entities variable to 1, thus only allowing one mob to spawn at a time if it will stay within the spawner's range. We're also setting the required player range to only 1, which means the player has to stand directly adjacent or on top of the spawner for it to work. We also want the spawn count to be 1, so it doesn't spawn several Harrys at the same time. The spawn range then will determine how far from the spawner the mobs will be able to spawn. Since we're spawning a zombie pigment, we will also have to change the entity ID. Make sure you use the correct name of your mob, sometimes it isn't what you would expect. Now we're ready to add our custom mob to the spawner. To do so, we want to copy the root of Harry 2.0 and paste it within the root of the spawner. To make this work, we will have to rename our mob root and change it to spawn data. Beware the correct capitalization of the letters. That's all there is to it. Now your custom mob will be spawning just as we'd like it to. Next up we're going to have a look at custom potions and effects. Choose a potion you like the looks of and put it into a chest to edit with NBT Edit. Within the potions compound you want to add your compound named Tag, just like with the enchantments, and within it add a list which name you set to custom potion effects, beware the capitalization again. Same thing as with the enchantments, each compound added to the list equals another potion effect. Most effects consist of a byte named amplifier, which is the potion level, another byte named ID with a capital I, which is the ID of the potion effect you want, and finally the duration, which is an integer that you add with the above icons as well. The duration will be set in ticks, where 2400 ticks equal 2 minutes. Next thing I want to show you guys is how to make a villager with your own custom trades. As a currency I want to use my special emeralds we made at the beginning of this tutorial and he shall sell us a full diamond armor set with custom enchants. To make this happen, we first want to spawn in a villager and interact with him at least once, so he creates his first trade. After that we can use the slash nbt edit command on him. What you want is to go all the way to the bottom and edit his offers tab. Within the recipe tag list, you will find the first trade in form of another compound you may edit. The option max uses describes the amount of trades the villager is willing to do in a row. We only want one of each armor piece, so we'll set this to 1. 
Within the buy compound, you can set the item the villager wants for the trade. I want my special emerald, so I'm going to copy the tag that contains my item name and enchantments and paste it within the buy compound of the first recipe. We also want to adjust the count and the ID of the item to our needs. For the item to sell, we are only going to change the item ID. Looking back at the tutorial, you should now be able to add your own enchantments, either creating them from scratch or copy them from somewhere. The first trade should be a diamond sword, which is ID 276. To make additional trades, we're now simply going to copy and paste our first trade and adjust the item IDs of what the villager sells. We're going with 310 for the diamond helmet, 311 for a chest plate, 312 for the leggings and 313 for the boots. Save your changes and enjoy your customized villager. Last thing I want to show you in this video is editing player heads. To change the skin of a player head placed in the world, use the nbt edit command on it and within the extra type tag fill in the player's name. Easy as that. If your head is in an inventory, it will need some more effort. Add a compound named tag for your item, just like you would with your enchantments and such. Within it, you have to add a string with its name set to Skull Owner. Beware the capitalization. And down below, you can set the player's name. Alright guys, I think this has been it for today's mod spotlight. There's so so much more to cover with this mod. It is incredible. I haven't even covered half of the stuff that you potentially could do with this mod. For instance, you can place your forestry bees into a chest and adapt every single trait. Or you can look at an MFSU and use the command in order to fill it up. It is incredible. Everything that is changeable in the game with entities can be adjusted with this mod. Oh man, this has been a lot to take in for one mod spotlight, but I'm sure you guys are gonna have tons of fun using this as a creative tool for your adventure maps and such. And there's gonna be tons of useful links in the description, such as the Minecraft ID list and the enchantment list and stuff like that that you're gonna need in combination with this mod. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you find it useful, have a great time and hopefully see you the next time. Bye bye.